Yo, Elliot, what are some tips you can give to someone who's looking to find religion? I think that's interesting because I'm not so sure we go looking for religion. I don't think anybody really just goes looking for religion. I think God calls some people. I think there's a, and there have those who uh, have even written books about it. I think there's a book called The God Gene. I don't know anything about it, but I think that there's a God gene inside us. I even think that there's a, I think they say that there's a DMT. I think they call it like the God particle. There's, the image of God resides within us. There's no question about it. DMT or God DNA, whatever you want to call it, the bottom line is that there's a, there is a yearning that some people are very sensitive to or a calling to the divine that some people are just more sensitive to than others. I, I know I am. I don't know how else to describe it, but all my life, as far back as I can remember, you know, even as a teenager, I had this like, I know there's something missing here. And I know that I'm not going to be able to, as much as I wanted to, and I tried to fill these God-sized holes in my life with man-made things, right? Like sex and drugs and uh, entertainment and all these things that give us experience and pleasure, I too tried to fill those but I, there was a sense in me that no it transcends all this and i have a journey and you're gonna have a journey too right and and so everybody's journey to i don't know how else to describe it but as god pulls you or drags you through the mud it's kind of what happens that happened to me i think about it like think about what the mud is mud is dirt which is lowly mixed with water which is more divine, right? It's a little bit more divine, right? Water, be like water, right? So being dragged through the mud, I think is a great example, a great way, a great metaphor to describe my, my ascendant path to where I am today. And who knows if my journey's done, I don't know, <laughs> right? I, I found much more stability than I've ever had, much more conviction than I've ever had. But I started... Wow, where did I really start? I think I started, I read a philosophy book when I was like in sixth grade uh, by a man named Apollo, Apollo May. And the book was, Who Are You Really? And that spark came to me because I'm of mixed race, right? I'm not so black and I'm not so white, right? Some people will argue, right? People are like, Elliot, why you got that white Jesus? I'm like, well, because I don't have any hangups about white people. I'm part white too. I'm married, my, my kids are white, right? So, but people, you know, they, they got this racial mindset. So I grew up in a racial mindset of world. So it was like, Elliot, what are you? What are you? And so I wrestled with that as a youth. Elliot, what up? And I'm like, what the, yeah, what am I? Like, I'm not like those black kids. And I'm not like those white kids. What the heck? <laughs> and so I had to figure it out. And so that's basically what, I think that's what opened me to the divine. Because when I read this book, and it was a mix of spirituality and quantum physics, this philosopher was like you're not any of this stuff he was like you're not if you're not your body you're not your race you're not your name you're not any of the things that people think about you you're not even what you think about yourself you are of a divine essence and that the real you transcends all this and when I heard that it gave me a sense of hope I was like wow and so he started to describe God in the various different ways that he described them. And so that that opened me. And so from there, I went through, I, try, I was dragged through the mud of all kinds of different religions, except the one that I actually am, right? Because finding yourself, what do you have to do? You have to leave, you gotta leave home. And this is why I don't, you know, I don't necessarily proselytize. I tell people where I am and what I think is true, and you can do what you wanna do, because I think in a way, we all have a different journey and we have to be dragged through our particular mud. Why are you going to be dragged through your particular mud? So if you ever read the book, The Alchemist, it, it, really, it really depicts this very well. The young boy, the boy in, in The Alchemist, he starts out as a shepherd and he is living in a shack or whatever, I don't know, a barn. And he's 
not satisfied with his mundane life. He's not satisfied with what he has, where he is. So he goes on this journey. And the whole book is about how he goes. He's trying to find the pyramids of Egypt. Just think about what the pyramids of Egypt represent. Spiritual ascendancy, right? And that's what I was seeking too. I think that's what a lot of these guys who get caught up in ayahuasca trips and all that stuff, they're looking for the pyramid. They're looking for how can I communicate with God, right? They're looking, they're looking for that experience and they're looking for something novel, right? And so he was, all these new age religions, they're all very novel. I remember first time I discovered new age, which was a part of my being dragged through the mud, is it was novel. It was like, whoa, I stumbled upon something, right? And so he, the story about him is our story, is my story. He goes through and he's, he meets the alchemist and he meets these, he goes through all kinds of stuff. He gets to the he gets to the pyramids, and let me just put it this way, he's disenfranchised. He's like, this ain't it. He comes all the way back home, and when he's home, he realizes, oh man, my treasure's here. Like something came to him, he was like, I need to dig. So I think he was in a barn. He was like, I have this sense that I need to dig where I started. He came back to where he started, he started digging, and the treasure he was looking for was right there. That's me. That's my spiritual journey. You say someone who's looking to find religion. I didn't find it. I, I, like the boy, I came home. I just came back home. But along the way, I was willing to try different things out. I was Protestant. I was Baha'i. I was New Age. I was all these things. I almost became Orthodox, right? Because this is when I started coming back to the faith, right? And orthodoxy brought me back to Catholicism, just to be completely honest. So I have, a, I have a soft spot in my heart for orthodoxy. I would be orthodox if I wasn't Catholic, meaning I'm not orthodox. I'm actually Catholic. I was baptized Catholic. So I'm just going to be what I am, right? Because otherwise, that means I'm still on the journey. I'm not going to go and I don't want to be anything other than what I am. <laughs> I know that sounds strange to a lot of people. I don't want to be anything other than what I am. And I, and I remembered what I am. I'm Catholic. It's good enough. Good enough for me, right? And as a result, I go deep. I'm digging, that, digging down for that treasure, and I'm finding all kinds of things, all kinds of wrong thoughts I had about it, a lot of lies that people believe about it, and a depth that I had always hungered for. I was always very hungry or thirsty for the mystical depth that's available in traditional religion, right? But you get... You get the muddy version of it in New Age. It's mixed with, you know, do you ever say if you mix a little bit of truth with falsehood, it's easy to receive because there is a little bit of truth there. Right? There's a little bit of truth there. That's some truth. But it's mixed with the dirt. So dragged through the mud. I've stumbled upon the pure drinking water that's, that's satiating me now like snake juice. And because I'm so confident in it, I'm not distracted by people's hangups because I know that they have subverted mindsets about things. And I don't blame them. I use there too. I'm telling you my story in hopes that you can see yourself in it because I, I don't know what your journey is. You're asking me for tips. Some of the things that I did was I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. I'm curious. I, you know, you, you got to explore. But when it really boils down to it, what God is asking you for is a relationship with him. That's what the whole story of revelation is. The whole story of revelation. And I'm just going to use that term as in a broad sense from, uh, you know, the Abrahamic faiths, right? I'm not getting into what's right or what's wrong, but the Abrahamic faiths, are revelation faiths, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, there's, and particularly Christianity is a salvation faith, which basically means God is, wants to be in communion with you. God's like saying, Hey, Hey, I'd like a relationship with you. He's been doing that with us. He still does it with you. He might be doing it with you. He's like saying, Hey, I'm here. I'd like to have a relationship with you. I love you. But if you're too stubborn or you're too wayward or you're too addicted or you're too angry or you're too smart for yourself or whatever it is, then he's like, he's going to be like, okay, well, I guess you're just like a girl, right? 
You don't want a relationship with a girl. You might be open to a relationship with a girl. Hey, I'd like to take you out. But if she's too busy with other things or she, you know, she thinks too highly of herself or whatever the case may be, you're not going to chase her unless you're a simp and God is not a simp. So he's like, all right, well, I, if you change your mind, I'll be here for you. We read a passage in the Bible today was that when Jesus talks about knock, knock, if you keep knocking, the door will be opened. That's my final tip to you. Keep knocking, keep knocking. Where I was going with that before is keep knocking through prayer. Pray to God. Say, God, where do you want me to begin this relationship with you? Where shall I begin? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to approach this? Give me some tips. Don't ask Elliot Hulse. Yo, Elliot, ask God, give me some tips. I have to say, right, just because it's where I am, right? I have to say that it's beautiful that God provides structure in organized religion on earth. Because everything to be any for anything to be worth anything in the third dimension, it needs structure. That's why we're not floating around as spirits. We have structure. Religion needs structure. Everything that God manifests here requires structure. The beautiful thing about structure, and I say beautiful in its in a poetic way, is that it's fallen. Anything that's structured is fallen. Right? It collapsed into time and space. Anything that's fallen is going to lack its true spiritual essence. So anybody who has hang-ups about the church or they have hang-ups about Christians or they have hang-ups about organized religion, you really where I'm going with it, that's because you are rightfully wanting the pure essence, but unfortunately you don't get the essence, the pure essence, until you die and go to heaven, if you go to heaven. You get the fallen version of it. And so you submit yourself to the fact that organized religion is fallen. So are you. And so you work within the structure, the, the sacraments, the words in, through revelation in these sacred scriptures, through tradition. You use these tools that God gives us as a ladder to grasp, right? They're not, they're not, it itself, it's not truly it. They're training wheels to get there. And anybody who says they don't need training wheels is fooling themselves, right? Unless you're so transcendent, right, that you're floating on air. No, you need training wheels because we live in a fallen world, right? And so my uh, piece of advice in this regard is don't be afraid of organized religion. Why be afraid of something that's ordered, right? Organized just basically means it's organized, right? But of course we live in, they say God gathers, what is gathering? An order. Satan scatters. So all this, oh, I'm just spiritual. Oh, I just have a relationship, a personal relationship. That's scattered. That's disordered. That's chaos. You might think there's some virtue in that, but that's not what God intended. That's why he revealed himself, right? Right? Even in the Old Testament, that's why the Old Testament, you know, and I'm kind of speaking to Protestants right now, right? Or these ones, or, or, or people who call themselves Christians, but they're outside the church. From the beginning, God gave form, ritual, right? What is the Ark of the Covenant? This is another thing Protestants say. They say, oh, it's when you make these statues, right, or these pictures, it's false idols. God told the Jews to create, or Israelites, because I'm not even sure they're real Jews, told them to create the Ark of a Covenant. What is it? It's got like argyles on it and stuff. Is that, is that false idols? No, that's God revealing himself through form. God gives us form to reveal himself. That's why he became man in Christ. God loves form, right? So rituals, symbols, right? Catholicism is a symbolic faith, right? We actually have the body and blood of Christ in a, and I'm not calling it just symbolic, but it is a physical thing. Beautiful. How beautiful is that? That's why the Catholic Church has all the most beautiful architecture. 
most beautiful architecture. Right? Anyway, so I'm not, I'm not trying to get you on my team. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I think. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit makemenstrongagain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.